is it one of the basic principles? What does Shema Yisrael Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Ahad Hear O Israel Hear O Israel The Lord our God The Lord is one What does that really mean? And why is it important? Office of about that Christos the Moshi is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now what we have to do is define what does the word order mean according to the pure language of Negus Neges, according to the scripture. Now, what does the Shema, what does the Shema mean? What does, what does the Shema really mean? You understand? What relationship does the Shema have to the Melchizedek? What relationship does the Shema have to us as lost sheep of the house of Israel? And why is it one of the basic principles spoken of when we turn our Bibles to the book of Hebrews? Now, why the book of Hebrews? The book of Hebrews is the one gospel, you can say, in the New Testament that specifically speaks to us as the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach's primary you understand? Primary target audience, you understand? In coming into this world and in bringing the good news of his majesty in the Christ, in the anointed, in the Moshiach, in the Moshiach. In the book of Hebrews chapter 5, which we have been studying previously, and I advise all newcomers, you understand, to ask the brothers and sisters and mothers about that and to get a copy of the previous teachings and the similar teachings on this subject matter, speaking about the book of Hebrews. You understand, we're in the book of Hebrews chapter 5. Now, the book of Hebrews chapter 5, it speaks about our great high priest. It speaks about the office. It speaks about the office of the high priest. It's about that, about that Christos, the Moshi, is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now, what we have to do is define what does the word order mean according to the pure language of Negus Neges, according to the scripture, according to the Metaf Kedus, the book of the holy. You understand? We have to also define what does Melchizedek mean. We have to define each and everything that we don't understand in this book. In order for us not to find ourselves, you understand, in breach of contractual agreement as we have been for 400 plus years. You understand, as the people, for 400 plus years, we as the Lord Sheep of the House of Israel, you understand, have been in contractual breach of agreement. You understand, we have broken our contract. You understand? And we have been penalized, you understand, with slavery, you understand, with the loss of our name, with the loss of our identity, with the loss of who we are. In this situation that you see black people in the Americas and the Caribbean suffering to this very day, you understand, because of disobedience. Now that we have accepted the invitation of Negus Neges, of Garmawi Negus Neges, His Imperial Majesty, in and according to His Christ, you understand? We have the opportunity now, you understand, to once again be a child, a son, or a daughter, according to what it says in the book of John. In the book of John, it says they came to His own, but His own received Him not. His own did not kebele, mekebele. His own did not kabbalah Him. You understand, his own received him not. But, you understand, as many of them that did receive him, you understand, as many of them that did accept him and did have faith in his name, his true name, not his blasphemed name, his true name, Yeshua, Hamoshia, Yehoshua, Hamoshia, Jesus, Iosus, Christos, not Jesus. You see, Jesus, Zeus is a totally different Greek name. Zeus. Jesus, you understand, and Iosus or Iesus in the Coptic, you understand, elocution or pronunciation is totally different than what the world believes and what many who are deceived, ones who don't know who God is. You understand? We can know who God is. You understand? We're not to worship an unknown God. We're not to worship God ignorantly. You understand? So this requires now teaching. You understand? This requires study. So within the Bible studies, you understand, may you all gather around now and get your scriptures, you understand? Turn to the book of Hebrews with us and let us study this and touch on what does the Shema, what does 
Shema Israel Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Ahad He O Israel He O Israel The Lord our God The Lord is one What does that really mean? And why is it important? Well it's important because when we start to study the book of Hebrews and we will begin with chapter 5 Chapter 5, speaking about our great high priest, speaking about the Moshiach, Christos, the anointed, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. You understand? Then, then it speaks of a warning. You understand? A warning and also in some, according to some biblical scholars, they call this part at verse 11, the third warning. You understand? To be brought on to maturity. So before we get to verse 11, let's just touch on the verses previous to it and connect with the previous teachings. So we'll begin from, say, verse 5, where it speaks about Christos, the high priest, after the order of Melchizedek. So also Christos, the Moshiach, the anointed, glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said to him, Thou art my son, today... Have I begotten thee? From such a time, the importance of Scripture, as he says in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears to him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, although Yeshua HaMoshiach was a son, our elder brother, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And this is an important point we have to make right here about verse, verse 8 of chapter 5 in the book of Hebrews. Have we as a people, because we are children, we are sons and daughters as well, you understand, of Yahweh Elohim, of Adonai Yahweh Elohim, of the God of Israel, El Elohe Israel, you understand, yet have we learned obedience by the things we have suffered, have we learned obedience by these past 400 plus years, have we learned obedience based on what we have suffered over the last 2,000 plus years, have we learned obedience by the things we suffered. This is why Yeshua HaMoshiach is our high priest, is our example. And this is the reason why our father, Batachin Kedamawi Haile Selassie, you understand? He reminds us and he warns us, you understand, of the importance, you understand, of Jesus Christos, faith in the Christ, you understand, and the Metzhaf Kedus, and the Book of the Seven Seals, and the Holy Bible, the Book of the Holy. So it says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things he suffered. And being made perfect, being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. So this is show the importance of obedience before so-called love. You understand? Because it's through obedience, both would you know who to love, you understand? And who is able to be loved through, through obedience. So we find that obedience is a theme here because obedience is the, first, is, is the first word, you understand, in God. Obedience is the first word in God because the Son himself shows us that by example. It says that though he were a son, yet learned he obedience. Yet he learned obedience by the things he suffered. See, a lot of people run away from suffering because they don't know how properly to interpret what they're suffering. They are they interpreting what they're suffering wrongly. They're blaming people and other people and everything, but they're not learning obedience to the source of their lives. You understand? They're looking for God outside of themselves, you understand? But not as a source of their lives within themselves. And they are not becoming obedient to his word and to the example, Yeshua, Yehoshua, HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos. You understand? Because either they blaspheme his name, you understand? Either they blaspheme his teaching or they blaspheme his body, the corpus Christi, you understand? By saying he's blonde here, blue eye, or calling him Jesus, you understand? Or the teachings not being based, you understand, on the scriptures, you understand? But being drawn from the scriptures a little bit here, a little bit there, but not being based on what the scriptures is actually saying and what's confirmable by the word of the good. 
So it says both here that though he were a son, though he were a child, yet learned he obedience by the things he suffered and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Now, some people say there's, there's nothing perfect and nobody perfect. And some people think perfection is a fantasy. You understand? But that's because they're not being obedient and they're not learning by the things they're suffering or they're running away from sufferation, therefore bowing down to the beast. You understand? Therefore making, making, making death their shepherd. You understand? Because they're running away from the words of life. You understand? So they cannot be made perfect. So what we're learning from here is not just the te teachings in the sense of history, biblical history, but we're also learning the mechanics of the kingdom of heaven, of the Mengishta Samayat. We're learning the mechanics of the Mengishta Samayat. You understand? So being made perfect by learning, you understand? Learning obedience by the things being suffered, becoming perfect, you understand? He became the author of eternal salvation to all them that what? that obey him notice it doesn't say to all them that just love him you understand or say they love him because true love of god you understand says to keep the commandments this is how we know god's love you understand keep the commandments you understand so he is an author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him so the principle in the of the discipleship, of the line of Judah discipleship, of the order of Melchizedek, Tzedek, is obey and love. Not love and obey, but obey and love. Because we obey him, you understand, we come into his love. You over? So he's called of God, he's called of Elohim, he's called of the good and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now, it's very interesting here because we have to give you a little bit of background on this, you understand, so you can understand this more fully in connection with the scripture. You understand? The order of Melchizedek. First of all, first of all, Christos' resurrection, Acts chapter 13 and 33 which qualifies him to be our high priest for the Moshi, you understand, the Christos, the Christ, the anointed, Yeshua, the son, to be our high priest, he had to partake. He had to partake of our humanity as mentioned in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 18. And, and to enter with this humanity into, and enter with this humanity, into resurrection in his humanity he can be touched with the feeling of our weaknesses and be merciful to us now in the book of hebrews chapter 4 and 15 chapter 2 and 17 they affirm this now in resurrection in the tinshai in the tinsai in his divinity the melakotu you understand he can do everything for us and be faithful to us. You understand? Hebrews 7, chapter 7, verses 24 to 25, as well as chapter 2, verse 17 again. You understand? Now, in verse 6, where it says, even as also in another place, he says, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. This refers to the ascension and enthronement of the Mashiach, of the Christos, of the anointed. Psalms 110 verses 1 to 4 also affirm that which are in addition to his resurrection and in addition to the Tenshai, you understand, and further qualify him to be our Lika Kahinat, to be our high priest. Hebrews 7 and 26 again. Now the order of Melchizedek, you understand, is higher than the order of Haron of Aaron. You understand? The order of Haron was for the priesthood, for the Kehenet, you understand? That was only in humanity. You understand? That, that was only in humanity. Sabawi. You understand? Yeso Besoliginet. Overs? Gabachu. You understand? Whereas the order of Melchizedek is for the Kehenet, you understand? The priesthood that is both humanity and divinity 
This is fully delineated in chapter 7 of the book of Ibrawiyan, of the book of Hebrews. Now, out of death, out of death here does not mean that Christos, the anointed, did not enter into death and suffer death. It means that he resurrected out of death in verse 7. We're referring to verse 7 now. Before he died, Christos the Moshiach, he prayed for this, and God, Elohim, his father, our father, answered by raising him from the dead. From the dead. Notices. He learned this obedience through the suffering of Mot. He learned this, this, this obedience through suffering Mot and overcoming that false god, Mot. You understand that Canaanite god called Mot. You understand? Now, the Greek word, it implies, it implies the thought of author. Author and cause. You understand? The Greek word, you understand, that's referred to when speaking like he's the author. He's become the author, you understand, of our salvation. You understand? He's become, he's became the author. You understand? Became to all the source, the author, the cause of our salvation. Now let's go further. Verse 9. Verse 9, and having been perfected, not everlasting salvation. You understand? Not everlasting salvation, but eternal salvation of which all the effects the benefits and the issues are of an eternal nature, transcending the conditions and the limitations of time. This is why we say eternal salvation more so than just saying everlasting salvation. You understand? Know because we're transcending now the conditions and the limitations of time. Now, verse 10, it says, being addressed by God as an high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, this is what Negus Neges, Kedamawi Haida Selassie has done for us. You understand? He has addressed Jesus Christos to be that high priest. You understand? According to the order, you understand, of Melchizedek. So the question remains what does the Shema mean? Why is the Shema important? What is the Shema? Well, let's touch on that after we touch on this. Verse 11. It says, of whom, speaking about Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Now, it's very interesting when we get into an accurate translation of this verse right here. You understand? Another translation of that verse can be concerning whom we have much to say. That is also difficult to interpret since you have become dull of hearing. Once again, concerning, speaking of Melchizedek, we have much to say. That is also difficult. It is difficult to do what? Difficult to interpret. But in your Bibles, the King James is hard to be uttered. You understand? But, but now when we go to the book of the seven seals, the Metaf Kedus of Negus and Neges, we find this reading of the verse. It says, here's what, here's what, what uh, Ibrawiyan says. Verse 11. It says, Sile Ersum Yemin Nagro. Bizu negaralen Joro Chachuhu Sile Fezazua Bekala Lin Tereguamo Chink and no. It says about this, about this one, Malkaz Edik, we have much to say that is hard to explain. You understand? Know hard to Lin Tereguamo. It's hard for us to translate it since you have become dull of hearing or literally Joro Chachu whom your ears fezazu. Because your ears are like blurry. You understand? Like somebody have blurry visit, but but your ears have become come like blurry. You understand? In other words, hard to really hear it clearly. So bekal by word, mo chink no. It is difficult. It poses a lot of problems to translate the sense one's not even willing to listen to. 
You understand? And we can testify to this word here as amen and amen. You understand? As being true. But here's the key part of the scripture. Here's the key part of the scripture that we want to share with you. As we move from that verse now to verse 12, it says, For, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as, as, as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Or another translation of it reads, For when... Because of the time you ought to be teachers. Because of this time, we, we all ought to be teachers of this word. We all ought to be going out forward and teaching this word to as many as would hear. You understand? But the word now, it bears witness against us. You have need again for someone to teach you what the rudiments of the beginning of the oracles of God are and have become those who have need of milk and not of solid and not of solid foods you understand so when it speaks about the rudiments you understand it speaks about the primary elements the primary elements you understand when it speaks to us about the oracles you understand it speaks to us about the divine utterances the divine utterances it says Though this verse means teachers and teach, it likens the word of Elohim, the word of the good, to milk and to solid food. In other words, certain words, teachings, in the words of scripture, certain parts of scripture is like milk. You understand? And certain parts of scripture is like solid food. Some people are eating the solid food while they're still babes. You understand? And some while they are fully grown you understand so-called mature they are still drinking milk and not eating solid food you understand both of these are used now for nourishment you understand but in order you understand in order a babe you understand takes milk and the older person you understand who can process their own proteins eat solid food now this corresponds with Gita's Kal, with the with Adoni's word in Matthew chapter four verse four, and the prophet's word in Jeremiah chapter fifteen verse sixteen. Now, whenever I give you any of these quotes in the Bible studies, you understand when you have more time, you understand sit down and and go over these quotes. You understand or if you're studying by yourself, go over these quotes, study these quotes. Any questions, ask them. You understand? Ask, seek, and knock. Yovas, now Paulos and Petros, Paul and Peter, they held this same concept, the same idea concerning the divine word. You understand? About the divine word being like milk as well as solid food. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 2 and 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Now it goes on to further clarify for everyone who partakes of milk is inexperienced in the word of righteousness for he is an infant milk here refers to the rudiments of the beginning of the oracles of god mentioned in verse 12 whereas the word of righteousness it refers to solid food the good word mentioned in chapter 6 verse 5 is the word of the beginning or the beginner you understand christos in 6 and 1 but the word of righteousness, ascetic, is deeper than the rudiments, you understand, the primary elements of the beginning of the oracles of God because it embodies deeper thought of Elohim's justice and righteousness in his dispensational and governmental dealings with his people. You see, this is something that a lot of us, Rastafari, you understand, we have not really considered that as Ethiopian Hebrews. What is the dispensational and, and governmental dealings of God with his people? You see, if the Ethiopians understood that, what happened in 74 would never happen. If we as the people understood that, you understand, what is happening to us and continue to happen to our people, the lost sheep, would not continue, would not continue to happen. But now when we go a little deeper in this, it says this word is more difficult to discriminate than the word of grace. Acts chapter 14 verse 3, Acts chapter 20 verse 32, and the word of life, Philemon chapter 2 verse 16. But it goes on to say, conclude on this point, it says, but solid food is for the full grown who because of practice have their faculties, their senses, exercise for discriminating between both good 
and evil. So these faculties now are the senses implying the powers of perception that depend not only on our mental capacity. You see, perception doesn't depend just on the mental capacity, but also on our spiritual apprehension. That means what have we received? What have we grasped? You understand? Spiritually. You understand? According to the word of the good. You understand? Now, speaking about good and evil, you understand? Here refers to what is superior in contrast to what is inferior. That which is superior is the good. That which is inferior is the evil. That's why Nagus Nagas, Garma Nagus Nagas in the Pyramid Majesty says, good over evil. Good over evil. That, that which is superior over that which is inferior. The superiority of Christos the Mashi in contrast to the inferiority, you understand, of the angels, Moses, Aaron, you understand, or the superiority of the new covenant in contrast to the inferiority of the old covenant. Now, according to the context of this verse, the discriminating mentioned here is similar to discriminating between different foods and has nothing to do with the moral nature of things. Now, the reason why we're beginning this Shema reasoning, you understand, on this section of the book of Hebrews, because in, in the beginning of verse of, of chapter 6, actually, verse 1, it says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. In other words, therefore, leaving the word of the beginning of Christos, the Mashiach, let us be brought on to maturity or perfection, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith in God. Now, what is... What's trying to describe to us here is the primary word. The word of the beginning of Christos refers to the six items mentioned in this verse and the next verse. The six items mentioned in chapter 6 of the book of Hebrews, verses 1 and 2. These six items actually are, you understand, they constitute the foundation of the anointed life, you understand, of the Christian Hewitt. First, repentance from dead works. Secondly, faith in Elohim, faith in the good. Thirdly, the teaching of baptisms, plural, baptisms, water. Is it one of the basic principles? What does Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad, Hear, O Israel, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. What does that really mean? And why is it important? Office of about that Christos the Moshi is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now, what we have to do is define what does the word order mean according to the pure language of Negus Negus, according to the scripture.